realize that by looking at more factors, we can design environmental policies with co-benefits. Uh, another co-benefit which is really crucial is uh, efficiency. Uh, the way we use natural resources today is very inefficient. The way we use energy is very inefficient. The way we use water, the way we use land is very inefficient. So by having environmental policies that improve the efficiency of the way we use natural resources, we can simply do more or the same with less. So it's something which is just a win-win. It's better for the environment and it's as good or even better for the economy. So the, the green growth concept is really about bordering the view and not looking at environmental policies as something that focuses only on natural capital, but something much broader that can have impact on the entire economy. And we can have environmental policies that improve welfare because it, improve, it improves uh, the environment. An environmental policy, if for instance, it redistributes resources to the poorest in a country, might also have very good distributional impacts. And this can improve welfare, not through the environment, but through the distribution of income. And a very good example is the subsidies to fossil fuels. It's very bad for the environment. Uh, in countries with very high subsidies, everybody wastes uh, fossil fuels, so it's just very bad. But it's also a subsidy that is captured by the richest in the country. Uh, about 50% of the amount is captured by the 20% uh, the richest in the countries. So if we take this money and we give it to the poor, and not through a subsidy for fossil fuels, but through direct fiscal uh, financial transfers, the poor are much better off and the environment is better. Of course, sometimes the richest in the country would complain, but if we look at the entire society, you can reduce inequalities and improve the environment at the same time, which is, of course, very good for welfare. And the last uh, channel through which environmental policies can very efficiently improve welfare is by increasing resilience. And uh, two examples are, are critical. The first one is natural disasters. Uh, deforestation, for instance, is increasing floods. And we know that by protecting forests, we can reduce floods. And if we reduce floods, uh, we reduce all the shocks to the income and uh, the, the capital of households. So this will smooth out their wealth, and this is good for welfare. And the second example is a vulnerability to community price volatility. And of course, the example of oil shocks is, is quite clear. In the 70s, we used twice as much oil uh, with respect to the uh, level of, of GDP as we do today. And we were much more vulnerable to the peak oil, to the oil shock of the 70s then we are vulnerable to the oil shock that we had in the last 10 years. So by using natural resources much more efficiently, we become less vulnerable to any sh price shock in these in this, uh, commodities. And looking at these markets, which are very, very uh, volatile and the prices are changing uh, day to day, it's not a bad idea to become less vulnerable to this, to this volatility. So this is, again, a way for an environmental policy I try to reduce my oil consumption to have an impact on welfare, which is not only for the environment, but also for something different, so resilience in that case.